Basic Blueprint Reading for Welders, Chapter 6, Dimensioning, Part 1. Gary Pace, PECWI, TexasWeldingEngineering.com. Okay, Basic Blueprint Reading by Rick Costin. This book was written out in Oregon. It's an open source book. If anybody wants to get a copy of it, download it, change it, whatever. They've got the copy free license, so it's not copyrighted. This is an entry level blueprint reading book written for the first year welding student. If you want to find it, um, if you just do a Google search with Open Oregon Blueprint Reading, it'll take you to it. We're going to dive into Chapter 6, Dimensioning. This is Part 1 of 3 or 4. Okay, we're going to talk about numerals, dimensions, extension line, arrowheads, dimensioning, figures, and we're just going to grind our way through um, dimensioning and how to do dimensioning on drawings. So that's our learning objective. So we're going to talk about numerals. It's got dimensions, arrowheads, dimension figures, etc. Okay, dimension line. The dimension line is a fine dark line with arrowheads on each end. It indicates the direction and extent of a dimension. So a dimension is just a number, a length. 6 inches, 23 millimeters, 4 miles, whatever. It's a dimension. In machine sketches and drawings, so this would be something for like an airplane, um, we're going to use fractions and decimals for our dimensions. The dimension line is usually broken near the middle to provide an open space for the dimension numerals. In architectural and structural sketches, so where we're building buildings or bridges or big things, we generally use feet and inches and the numerals are usually above an unbroken line but for the most part this is how your dimensions are going to look they're just going to be in between the um, dimension arrows so that's what we've got for dimension lines for um, the most important thing that is uh, that is the drawing needs to be clean we got to have a clean drawing so you we got certain rules that we try and follow when we put together a drawing. We try not to put too much information on it so the drawing just becomes a cluster and we can't read it. So this is how dimension lines should be sketched. You can see I circled in the yellow um, how there's a space in between our um, dimension lines, our extension lines, and the object lines. See how the object lines there circled in um, yellow? I've got the little pink guys, and I got a little pink dot on an object line and a pink dot on a dimension or on an extension line. So those line up. Then I've got the same thing over there with the little blue dots on the other object line and extension line. So this is how our dimension lines with extension lines should look. We shouldn't have things all. Um, too busy, too much information on there, or anything like that where it's just a messy drawing. Um, dimensions less than six feet are generally given in inches. So if we're going to, you know, do anything under six feet, you just go in inches. Dimensions over six feet are usually shown in feet and inches. This is uh, to be sure that it is clear how the dimensions are called out. When calling out dimensions that are over 12 inches make sure all the dimensions are called out in total inches or feet and inches throughout the entire drawing so you're either going to do four foot five inches or you're going to do it where it's like 53 inches they both mean the same thing if like that one four foot five and 53 inches are the same number but if there's a mix of dimensioning you can get in trouble so if you had like four foot eight inches and then um, 48 inches you could um, jam things up and uh, you know think cut it too short cut it too long put something in the wrong place so that's why when we're doing dimensioning we kind of want to be we generally want to be consistent in how we use the numbers we don't want to mix and match extension lines extension lines on a drawing are fine Dark, solid lines that extend outward from a point on a drawing to which the dimension refers. Usually the dimension lines meets the extension line at a right angle. There should be a gap of about a sixteenth of an inch. So you can see that uh, on a couple of these spots, there's uh, the lines are a sixteenth of an inch. 
Extension lines can also cross. When extension lines cross, you don't gap them. You just run them across each other. So this is how we're doing extension lines. Extension lines and dimension lines work together. Um, so here we've got uh, the, the dimensions. You want to place them on, on the, the view that they're needed when we're doing um, an orthographic projection. So you want to keep the drawing or the dimensions as clear as possible. You don't want to um, duplicate dimensions. Here we've got unidirectional dimensioning in the bottom left and then aligned dimensioning. So you can see in aligned dimensioning where I circled that one and a half, the dimension is just aligned with the surface of that block. Whereas unidirectional dimensioning, we don't turn it 90 degrees so that it aligns with the surface or a, a specific line. So um, it is important to remember to place the dimensions on the views. Um, in a two or three view drawing where they will most easily be read and understood. Avoid dimensioning to hidden lines and avoid the duplication of dimensions. Use common sense. Keep dimensions as clear and simple as possible. Remember, the person reading your drawing needs to clearly understand beyond question how to proceed. Otherwise, costly time and materials will be wasted. So you guys are going to be reading the drawings. You guys aren't going to be making drawings for the most part. So here's some dimensioning placement, some examples of how dimensions would look. Um, nothing too exciting there, but it just gives you some uh, examples of what they'd look like. We've got dimensional uh, dimensioning, and then we've got millimeter dimensioning, depending on which units you're using. So here's just a drawing that you might run across out in the world, and it's got a lot of different um, dimensions on there. The R stands for radius. If you thought you were getting away from all of that geometry and whatnot in the fifth grade, well, you're wrong. Circles, triangles, all that stuff. It's, if you're going into construction and manufacturing, we use all of that good stuff. So get used to seeing it. Um, radius. A radius is you know half of the distance across a circle. It's from the center point out. That's a radius. And I circled some other dimensions here, you know, to kind of give you an idea of, you know, some dimensions that we might see. That 33 up there that I circled, you know, that's the, the distance from the edge to the center of the circle. Um, 17, that's from the, that edge to the bottom of that notch. Okay, so here's some dimensions for, you can see I circled up there in angles. So sometimes we got to put an angle on something. So usually you end up with an angle, you put it inside of the angle that's being measured. But sometimes if it's too tight, you're going to have to use one of the alternatives. And then down here at the bottom, you know, we've got our standard dimensions. But sometimes there's there's a, a dimension that's just too tight to put on a on a drawing in the standard procedure. So we use these alternatives. And as long as it's readable. Um, it, you should be good to go. Okay, so we covered numerals, dimensioning, extension lines, arrowheads, and a couple other items that could be useful in reading drawings. But being able to come out of it and read a drawing and understand the dimensions and angles and whatnot is uber important in our business. So keep that in mind going forward.